this is day three, the final day of the 2025 Glamp Ground Startup Challenge. I am incredibly excited about today. The last two days have been energizing. It's been exciting to see the interaction with you guys. Uh, a lot of you have sent in your homework, which I know we're all adults here and doing homework is not always the most fun thing, but I've seen a lot of great plans coming across my, my email. I've tried to respond to a lot of you guys already. Some of, the, some of you I haven't gotten back to yet, but it's exciting to see what visions you, you have because at the end of the day, that's why I do what I do is to, to see other people's plans and dreams come, 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 come true. Today is gonna to be all about finance. I know it's the least sexy topic, but it's probably the most important one. It's gonna be, how are you gonna make money? How are you gonna raise money if you need to? Um, and ultimately, hopefully giving you guys some examples from how we did it with Ferncrest and how that can be relatable to, to how you can do it. Because I think what social media doesn't do is it doesn't show, it, or, or sometimes it makes it seem too easy. It makes it seem like somebody just comes in with a bunch of money, bag full of money, and you get the, you get the job done. Man, that is not how it is, right? There is so much that goes into building a small business, cash flow, financing. And that's sort of what we want to be an example for is the idea that, you know, this is not a wealthy family that just is having these pet projects. This is like a lot of hard work, but it's not uh, rocket science either. Like you can figure it out. There's not, there's not some hidden secret behind a wall of how you can actually make money with glamping. So that's what today is going to be all about. There's a few other things to note before I jump into the slides. One is uh, there's going to be homework today. There's going to be an assignment that I'm going to give you guys, and it's going to be just as simple and straightforward as the previous days. So hopefully you guys can check those off the list. Uh, there's going to be a little uh, uh, something that I'm going to give to people that have been doing their homework. And so if you've done your homework and you finish up today, uh, you're going to get something out of that. And, and then lastly, at the end, I also have a, another exciting thing to let you guys know about when it comes to how we're integrating the Dome 10 event into this, which is what this week and next week is all about, right? It's about not only the education, but also the tools to help people get up and running by next year. So we're going to go into that. And by the end of the day today, you'll know exactly how to design your sort of financial uh, plan for your glamp ground and how you're going to think about making money out of it. And then um, thinking about it from being profitable from day one, not day 20 or day 200. We want you to leave this session thinking, gosh, you know what? When I open, I can be profitable right off the bat if, if I do what I need to do to get there. And so I'll walk you through those steps to build that highly profitable glamp ground. And then if you have questions, please put them in the Q&A box. You have the chat box and then you have the Q&A box, just as a reminder, Put the questions in the Q&A box, put your chat conversational stuff in the, in the chat box. I'll keep both open and uh, I will be making sure that I try to answer questions in full at the end of this session. So let me share my screen and dive into some content. I am recording these. Um, at the end of it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to figure out how we're going to utilize some of that. I would definitely say if you're here right now, stick around for the whole session because I'm not sure if and when I'll be able to post them all, but I do have all the recordings. Uh, I, I, I think we will go ahead and, and use YouTube. If anybody has any questions or, or thoughts about where we could distribute them and if you think this would be useful to see again, I know that if you're here right now, you may not want to watch it again, but if, if there is any interest in that, let me know because um, that'll help me as I, as I work through this. All right. So We've been looking at dome tents and we've been looking at Ferncrest as the example. So today is going to continue to use our lamp ground as the basis for the teachings. And so here's an example of a profitable glamping site at Ferncrest. This is a dome tent, a hot tub, a platform. And I'm, I'm showing this to you right here because yes, it's beautiful and I'm very proud of Ferncrest, but I also want to show how simple it can be, how, how 
you can have something in a just a nice forested area with minimal amounts of construction and carpentry work, and you can have something that there can generate four to five thousand dollars a month in revenue, and most of that, you know, 70, 75 percent of that being profit. So then you think about, well, gosh darn, if I do a number of those, I have a very like a scalable business, and that is your example right here. It's that you don't have to think crazy, crazy construction projects. You don't have to think two years of planning to make something like this. You could make this by April of next year. And that's the mindset that I want everybody to go into this with is that we're doing amazing, beautiful things as a community of glampers here, but we're, we're not building the Taj Mahal, right? We can do this. We can all do this. I want to, I want to just say that we can all make a profitable glamping business because it's, it's in us all. All right. Here's the thing. A lot of people think too, when they look at the numbers and they look at the, they look at their, their, their property, they're like, man, if I'm not, if I'm not packing this place, how am I going to make money? The, the reality is, is that the margins, the structures, how you're building a business is not always necessarily about occupancy. Occupancy being the percent of time that you're filling a unit, right? If you think about that, okay, so you fill, if you have a, a 100 days and you fill it 50 days, that's 50% occupancy. Basic math, right? So believe it or not, the hospitality industry is in the 30s to 40, 30 to 40% is the average occupancy in the hospitality industry. You hear all these stories, you hear about people being successful saying, I got 95 or 98% occupancy, or I talked, I've talked to some people that are like, yeah, like 100% occupancy. And it's like, no, you know, at the end of the day, if you're building a sustainable small business that you want to make real good money out of, it might actually be better if you think less ambitiously about occupancy and think more about profitability and think about more about what you can actually achieve. And so what I wanted to say is Ferncrest is wildly successful, but it, you know, it's in the summertime, it's running in the 60s percent occupancy because the weekdays are softer, weekdays, weekends are heavier, right? That's when you want to really have the higher occupancy because that's when your rates are higher. But at the end of the day, you know, you, you can do a lot with 30, 40, 50% occupancy. And I want you guys to feel okay about that when you're going into your first, you know, little bit of uh, operations, especially when you're launching a property and you're seeing like 15, 20, 30% occupancy. Guess what? You can still make money with that. And actually you can still make a lot of money with that. And maybe it's better for you and your operations. You're not breaking your back, cleaning all these tents and things like that. Because the key is not the occupancy, but your pricing. And this is where I want you guys to really wrap your heads around, which is your pricing strategy needs to be premium. A lot of people coming into this space come into it from looking at the RV park world or traditional campgrounds. And I look at it coming in from the boutique hospitality space, the boutique hotel space. And at the end of the day, even though you're only spending maybe ten or $15,000 building a glamping site, right? A dome tent, electricity, all that type of stuff. You're actually creating an experience that is very similar to a hotel experience, a boutique hotel experience. So your pricing is actually more logically premium than camping. And I, I, and I know that that shouldn't be a, a big surprise to people, but you shouldn't be getting into this industry unless you're willing to charge premium rates. And I know geographics are going to come into play your land is going to come into play, but don't shortchange yourself. Don't build something and price it to be affordable to boost occupancy. I would rather see you price it a little bit uncomfortably high and be okay with that 30% occupancy for a while as you work out the kinks and you figure out how you're going to make this business work and manage it and things like that. Because, hey, somebody's paying you $300 a night versus $100 a night, you have to only rent one night instead of three nights for the same amount of money. But here's the catch. It's not just the same amount of money. You're actually making far more, even if you rent, if you rent three at 100 versus one at 300, you're making a lot more money on that 300 because you didn't clean the tent three times. So that $300 one night stay is much, much better than renting something for $100 because you're gonna make more money there and you're gonna have less work. So, your range of pricing, again, is not going to be something that I can give you, but I would say this. 
you're probably not in this business to rent things for less than $150 a night. I would want to see your ADR, your average daily rate, north of that. And if you're doing something luxurious and even nicer, I want to see you much, much more north of that. So let me explain. Let me let me dive into sort of the uh, the example of Ferncrest. So Ferncrest is this year a two hundred and twenty four dollar ADR, average daily rate, occupancy and average daily rate. Those are the two things that you're going to hear a lot, and those are the two things that you should get imprinted in your mind because you're going to be thinking about that all the time. Because average daily rate is the average of the of the rates, but not the average of the time. So it's like basically if you rent 10 nights and every night is 100, well, your average daily rate is obviously then 100. Um, but if you have uh, if you have 20 nights and, you're, and your occupancy is 50%, then your revenue per available room is actually $50 because you have 20 nights, you rented 10, and then half of that is 50. So we're not talking about revenue per available room so much. We're going to talk more about ADR because that's where I want you to drive your numbers forward. So Ferncrest at 224 is actually not that much. If you think about it, that seems like an expensive camping experience, but it's a great deal on a boutique hotel experience. So Ferncrest is actually considered an accessible price point, an accessible campground. And the, the the pricing has actually even come down a little bit this year because I pulled down, I didn't I added some dome tents this year that didn't have hot tubs in them. And the hot tubs add about $30, $40 more per night per stay. So those lower price point dome tents brought the ADR down. And then my crest tents, my non-dome tents are actually under $200 near to like $150. And those are the more traditional tent structures that are still glamping, but those are those are those are bringing it down as well. So this overarching is the ADR of Ferncrest. So I want to use this as an example because we're not some luxurious, you know, five hundred dollar a night place, but we're also not a campground in our RV park. And this is where I think you can make a lot of money because there's a lot of people, even even you know even middle class, even like working class, that can go out and enjoy a one or two night stay at a place in this price point range. So that brings up today's first challenge. And this is just as important as setting that open date like you did yesterday, where I asked you to choose an open date, even though it might seem a little bit more uh, aspirational to actually have an open date right now. I want you to choose what is your average nightly rate gonna be? It's not what you're gonna rent it for a weekend night. It's not what you're gonna rent it for a weekday night. It's what, you're, what you think your average should be and you'd be happy with. And so again, I think that you have to think about what you're offering. Are you having in-suite bathrooms in your units? Well, then your average night rate, rate could be higher. Are you doing more campground setting like ours? Well, then you got to be a little bit more conservative. Are you giving like mountain vistas and like amazing views? That could be worth more. There's also a lot of other things that I'm going to dive into as well that's going to increase your nightly rate. So you can write this challenge down and think about it. And then by the end of the, 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 the next few slides, you might be able to start manifesting how you could actually come to a nightly rate that you're com confident with. I said it earlier, but I'll say it again. It's okay to feel uncomfortable with your nightly rate. It's okay to feel like, will anybody actually pay me this? I felt the same way. I really did. And we've had hundreds, if not thousands, probably thousands of people now, I haven't looked at the, the numbers, of people that have stayed at Ferncrest and paid meaningful amounts of money. On the holiday weekends, they're going to Ferncrest and they're spending $350 a night and they're happy, right? That's that's what matters. You don't want to have a disjointment between people like coming there and then not feeling like they're getting a great experience. But if you spent $300 and you're happy and you leave a five-star Google review, well, then you did a great job as a clamp around operator and you have no shame in that. You're providing value and experiences for people and that's what you want to do. This is an example of a $800 a night glamping experience. So this is a place called Open Sky. Um, has anybody heard of Open Sky? Open Skies, I believe it's Utah, right? So Utah is uh, a, obviously a beautiful place to glamp. This guy created an off-grid, entirely off-grid glamping resort with a restaurant, super luxurious units, hot tubs, the works. Uh, on the holiday weekends and things like that, these go for one to $2,000 a night. And I'm just using this as an example to say that the range is there. 
the range goes from hundred dollars to thousands of dollars a night in glamping. And you just have to choose a lane and choose an experience and choose what you want to create and you can make it happen. So, um, check out these guys as inspiration for maybe, maybe it's not where you want to go, but it gives you an idea of being like, wow, like, you know, if they're doing a thousand dollars a night and they're successful, uh, if I do, you know, $200 a night, I can definitely be successful. So people also get tied up in the idea that their business is all about the bookings. And large in part it is, like, don't get me wrong, your, your most significant revenue is going to be generated from the stay, but it's not everything. And if you want to be strategic about it, you have to think about this as a holistic business overall. Some of you have great ideas. I've already seen the emails, whether or not it's like, you know, wellness retreats or meditation or um, farming, all of these things. The, the key is with thinking about how you're going to get more than your booking or, or more than your, 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 your base rate is to get strategic with your pricing and then also to get strategic with the experiences that you offer. So we've already talked about it, but premium pricing for unique lamping experiences. Make sure that you're pricing your experiences correctly. The other thing would be, we're not gonna talk about it too much, but it's something that you definitely could look into is dynamic pricing. Pricing using tools out there, there's one called Price Labs. So pricelabs.co, I believe is the website. We use that for our, uh, our hotel as well as our city hotel. We don't use it for Ferncrest yet because we've had a good enough demand where I haven't had to dynamically price it. But I'll, I'll tell you one, quick story about dynamic pricing. Dynamic pricing works both ways. It brings prices down when demand is less, but it also increases pricing when demand is high. And so when I started using dynamic pricing for the Rex Hotel, our boutique hotel that's right down the road from Ferncrest, uh, very shortly thereafter, I saw a reservation come through for one of our cabin suites, which is beautiful and usually gets, you know, four or $500 a night. It's a really nice unit. They got like eight or nine hundred dollars a night. The, the system priced it that way and sold it as such, and and it was like super eye opening because the value is there. The time time is time is everything in hospitality. Demand where the where the where the customer is coming from and using technology to do that. So Price Labs is one tool that can do it. Um, I recommend you looking into that as you get things set up because that takes some of the pressure off of you. You give it the parameters and then it allows you to go for it. All right. So charging for add-ons and upsells. During the booking process, and this is why this is why direct bookings is so important, is the idea that you have an e-commerce business. I tell people this sometimes, and it's sort of eye-opening for them, but you're running a property, but you're actually an e-commerce business. And, and you're an e-commerce business because e-commerce means that you know you're e you're you're online and your 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 commerce is online. So you're not selling t-shirts and swag online but you're selling your book, you're booking people online. So your website is super important for that process because when they make the booking, they can actually add on things during that booking process. And if they're already spending a few hundred dollars on a night, adding something like uh, a meal package or a massage or all of these things during that booking process is a great way to make more money. You can also do the upsells after the fact too, as they come into the the next, you know, the, the, the week prior to staying there, you can set up automations with, with text messages and technology, again, through your, through your software that remind people about what they can get in addition to their stay. So that's a great one. Uh, pet fees are in there as well. Upsells, it's not really an upsell because if you're going to bring a pet, you're going to bring a pet. But if you're going to do a, um, a glamping business that allows dogs, charge for the dog. And there, there, there's reasons for that. A, you can monetize that, but you can also, um, you might need it for extra cleaning and things like that, but you will make profit out of that. And that's okay. That's a great way to increase your revenue because there's a lot of people that want to come with dogs and you can charge, we charge $40 a night. We make, I, I, I actually don't know what the numbers are this year, but um, over $10,000 in extra income just by charging dog fees. So think about that. Last, thing, last but not least is a self-service camp store. A lot of you guys might have seen our stuff on social media and have been really interested in this uh, because it's, it's just fun, right? It's fun to have a store. And the idea that you can make it self-service through technology, making sure that the door is only accessible by guests and then they can check out an iPad and it's on our system. There's a couple cameras, but at the end of the day, 
these are guests that are here on your property paying you to be there. So the chances of theft is low and the upside is high. So experiences to boost glamp ground rates. These are things that you wouldn't be charging for, but you're building into the experience and things like, you know, a stargazing experience, outdoor yoga sessions, campfire storytelling, foraging workshops. These are just examples. I'm not going to go into detail about these. The one I will go into detail with is the campfire storytelling, which is really, we don't necessarily do storytelling, although it is a form of storytelling, but every Friday and Saturday night, I pay somebody, I have my hype man and my, 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 his wife that basically are at the campground because I don't live there and I'm not there. So I have somebody that's paid to basically make a massive bonfire in our communal fire pit. Everybody has their own individual fire pits, but a communal fire pit by the ice cream trailer. And his job is just to be the hype man of the campground, talking to people, engaging with people, telling stories about the town. I tell you what, if you go to my if you go to my Google reviews right now on Ferncrest and you look at them, Steve and Susan, those are the two people. I'll give them a shout out here because they're amazing. They get more call outs and love in the Google reviews than anything else. The value of that campfire is so astonishingly high. So it's the small things that matter sometimes that you really just want to think about being strategic with. Here's another thing that we do to maximize our revenue at Ferncrest. This is a wood-fired sauna. So the wood-fired sauna is an amenity that is actually an add-on, it's extra. So we charge, um, we charge for people to use it. They get an hour session. And the reason why we do that is it has a firewood rack and it comes with all the firewood. And otherwise you have to buy firewood at the um, camp store for your campfire. So there is like this, like, okay, I'm getting some value out of it because I know I have to buy firewood anyways, but I get the firewood included and I get this, I get this amazing sauna experience that's looking out into the woods. Right directly behind it to the left of that, you can see in the woods another tent. And that tent is our wellness tent. The wellness tent is a structure that has a little boardwalk, not little, it's actually quite a long, a couple hundred feet boardwalk going out into the woods to a tent with a massage bed in it. And this is a new addition. We haven't really executed at a high level with this this year because we were, we were honestly, this is one of those examples of just getting a little bit too busy and not really focusing on making sure that we're, 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 we're making this the best experience possible. But I am very bullish on this type of thing. And I would definitely recommend if you're into wellness, if you, if you think your glam crown is going to attract people like that are interested in this, this is a great way to do it. Um, find a local masseuse, registered masseuse, right? Massage therapist that you can basically relay the, the bookings to, make a percent of the income off of this, and then just let them do their thing. So um, this is really cool. And this is upsold in the booking process, right? When you, when you book your tent, hey, do you want to add a massage for $100? Yes, please. People are on vacation. They want to spend money. So those are my examples. Your challenge number two for today is to come up with two secondary revenue streams you could implement at your glam crown. You've probably thought about stuff before. Let's nail it down, put it on paper. What are the two streams? You know, do you want to do a guided tour? Are you like really into your area? I know one guy um, who I'm working with up in, up in Maine, he, he loves kayaking and he is, he takes people out on kayak tours in the water. That's a great add on, right? Figuring out what fits into your lifestyle or what fits into your customer base is a, is a really important part of this process. So what are two secondary revenue streams? Jot them down. That's challenge number two. Challenge number one was what's your average nightly rate going to be? And then challenge number two is what is your revenue streams going to be? Your two additional revenue streams. This is sort of out of place in the slides. It should have come earlier, but I, I knew this was coming. It's the camp store uh, last Saturday. So this is very timely. Saturday, October 19th. I was very happy with these sales and I took a screenshot of it and I wanted to share it with you. So $683 for a Saturday in October, entirely self-generated by self-checkout. So not a single employee had to be there to, to ring up these sales. It was all done by the, by the guests. And the margin on a lot of this is around 75%, if not more. So generally speaking, if I did $700, I probably made 450 to 500 profit on that. So it's very profitable because you're not selling things like 
a dollar store. You know, you're a captive audience, so you should be pricing things appropriately. Um, I'll tell you my secrets. All of the all of the food, like the drinks, the ice cream bars, the the like the the snacks, for the most part, come from Sam's Club, Costco, right? Like same thing. Um, and you can you can just resell drinks in a in a nice fridge that you can get with a glass door, right? You buy that on WebStaurantStore.com, and you have a great store. Um, if you sell all prepackaged foods and nothing prepared by you, you don't even have to get a health license because you're not actually selling anything packaged or, uh, you're not selling anything prepared. It's all prepackaged. So you don't need like a health license. My ice cream trailer and my coffee trailer needs a health license because I prepare things. So, um, just a, just a note on that. Here's another belief that I hear from a lot of people is this idea that you're going to spend all this money, you're going to spend, 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 but I'm not going to make um, money until I open. I We started making money uh, a few months prior to actually opening. And I do this at most of our properties. It allows us to actually use some of that funding that's coming in from people booking to actually do the project itself. So if you do this strategically, and this is why the marketing that I talked about yesterday is so important. <laughs> if you build a following and you have people that are excited about uh, your property, then you will be able to generate revenue before you even open. And so here's a screenshot of the day that we launched bookings at Ferncrest on April 30th. And so this was just a you know the email inbox that basically shows that a bunch of people were booking uh, it was two months prior. So yeah, two months prior, generated $10,000 in that first week of booking, another $40,000, dollars $40,000 before we even opened. And cash was utilized for payments in May and June in advance of opening. And what is one thing about opening a business that you probably do know? That is the last couple months, the last month is where you're just like, you need that money more than anything. So it's really super important that you have a system in place and you start to actually generate revenue before you even open. It goes a long way. Those dollars mean a lot to you at that time. All right, but then you're like, ah, I just don't have the money to start this though. I like, I don't have two pennies to rub together. I really wanna start this, but where do I even get the money? And here's the, here's the answer. There are so many interested people out there that wanna be involved in this. And there are, don't let money be your problem. As much as money is oftentimes the biggest problem in life or seems to be that way, in a situation like this, you're not looking to buy a luxury car for yourself. You're not looking to do something foolish. You're looking to build an actual sustainable business. And therefore, there are a lot of people. And even if you don't have connections, even if you don't know anybody, I guarantee you, if you put the time in, you can find people. Here's the first one. Investors, outreach, friends and family. I know it's awkward sometimes. But everybody knows people in their networks that might have a high net worth individual. Even if the friends and family is not the high net worth individual, are they connected to somebody? At the end of the day, remember, it's not a favor. You are truly making a business proposition. It can be awkward as heck to ask somebody for money, but you are making them money. Believe it. Trust in it. Give them the security of the idea that this business is rooted in assets that are real, that are property based. So... Don't forget the fact that you're not going to zero if things don't go well. You have a property. You can always backstop it with that. Structure it as debt, though, if you can, instead of equity, or have a pre-planned buyout. I've done this not with Ferncrest because we were able to do that with seller financing and creative cash flow financing, but with another project that I've done, one that I did in the city, we've structured a equity with a buyout in three years based upon predetermined metrics. And the reason why I say that is like, you're going to be the one that's more invested in this than anybody else. And don't, don't feel like in three or four or five years that there is a, um, like you're, you're married to these people in the long run, give them the option of a buyout or, and give yourself the option of a buyout because that allows things that are not a good marriage to at least and amicably. So I'm a big believer in this. If they have equity, they can have the upside of the equity. 
but they need to have some type of buyout because you might want to run this for 10 or 20 years. They may not want to be involved for 10 or 20 years. So here's how I would present your plan to investors. Um, you can screenshot this, make sure you, you think about this because essentially you're going you're gonna to want to use this construct as a way to get people interested in your plan. Raising money is not rocket science. It just takes some discipline and takes some professionalism, which all of you can do. Here's bank loans and credit cards. So <clears throat> bank loans are a great way if you can get them. Sorry, guys. Um, they're hard to get sometimes for, for the actual development project. They're easy to get for the land. They're hard to get for the actual work that you need to do to actually develop the land into a glamp ground. And so the way that overcomes some of the bank limitations is to go to the SBA. So the SBA is a uh, government agency that basically insures those loans and therefore makes the banks a lot more likely to give you those loans. If you are interested in an SBA loan, there are third party companies that will work with you to get you that approval and make a small fee, not a percent base fee, but like, you know, a thousand or two thousand dollars to help you with that process. I recommend that because it can be complicated, but more and more importantly, time consuming. And I'd rather have you focus on building your business plan and figuring out all the details for your business and letting somebody that really knows how to go through the process do it for you because they can really help make sure that you cross all the T's, dot all the I's. I have one organization that I like to recommend. I don't have a, any relationship with them other than just re recommending them, both for my franchisees. So people that are building firm crests uh, have had a great experience with talking to them. They'll have a free phone call with you, go through what they can do. And um, I've heard good things about them. So I I'll just leave it at that. If you're interested in that, I can, uh, I can put that in the chat. I'll put the link in the chat later once we get to the Q&A section. Um, and then credit cards are obviously a form of debt, but they can be powerful when used wisely. And here's how I would use them. Combining credit cards with cash flow financing. That's the powerful situation because credit cards, I'll go back to the example that I said, credit cards are dangerous. If you go out and buy a, your personal car, go buy you know a, a, your, your new car and a credit card, bad idea. It's a depreciating asset. It's gonna get you in trouble. Uh, don't buy ass, don't buy liabilities with credit cards, buy assets. And when you buy the things to, um, to, to basically build your business with credit cards and you have a short time frame on when you're going to start generating revenue, such as the bookings that you're going to get a couple months before, you're able to use that as a mechanism to basically increase your purchasing power and extend your payments. So, right, if you have a 60-day credit card, which is, what I re which is what I would recommend in this process, you have 60 days to pay it. So if you're getting income in from people and then you're not having to pay that credit card, you're, you're using the credit card, but you're paying it out later, you have, a, you have a much better, healthier way of managing your cash than just taking a dollar in and sending a dollar out. So that's how I would use credit cards. Be careful with them. But everybody, for the most part, can get some form of credit card. And if you pair that with cash flow financing and specifically only tie it to the actual development of your project, that's how I would, I would get an additional amount of cash into the bank. So we did that with probably the, to the tune of 50 to $60,000 in credit card debt that was able to be basically relieved by the time we were open and operational. So as you can tell, I love this topic. And this brings up my third piece of homework for you. This is the How to Raise Money for Your Glam Crown ebook that I wrote, yours truly. And uh, I sent it out on social media maybe a month or two ago. And so if you have it already, great. If not, uh, message me. Actually, I got to figure out how I'm going to get this to you. Let me, uh, if you want to do the homework and you want to get this ebook, I will, I will stay on with the Q&A and I'll make sure I get a link to the ebook here and here that you can, you can download. So basically, this is a really, it's short. It's easy, but it goes into depth of all of this type of stuff. And I promise you, if you're looking even for a little bit about a little bit of money, this could be a very impactful, eye-opening experience for you. It's not going to give you the money, but it's going to help you with it. So um, 
I love teaching, as you can tell, and I like writing these things because it allows me to just basically put more content on paper than I could ever do in a video or if I could ever do on social media. So that's your homework for today. So if money is, isn't holding you back, like if, 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 if I know you're like, oh gosh, Brian, you make it look so easy. I'm not just gonna be able to go out and get $200,000, but, but assuming it's not holding you back, what is? Is it fear? Is it the unknown? Is it the like fear of failure? Like the idea that I'm gonna build it and nobody's gonna come? Well, I, I really want you to just feel confident that in the last three days, you've gotten at least some form of confidence, some pat on the back from me, from your peers in the chat room, that there is a route for you to get this done without a ton of risk. You know, we talked about how this is a business that is backed by assets in the property itself. So even though you're putting money into this business, you're really not in a, in a situation like you would be if you were like, you know, the teenager that wants to go raise $100,000 to make the next big app on an, on, for the iPhone. Well, you know what? Chances of failure are 99% with situations like this. Your chance of failure is very low here if you follow the last three days of content and you go into more detail with some other stuff that we can do for you as well. So let me talk to you a little bit about that. And, and I promise you we're gonna to get to Q&A. And there's one other thing, there's, a, there's, there's the special treat for everybody that did their homework and then a special treat for everybody. So first thing is just a reminder, the Dome Tent event is happening. It's now. I'm literally after this call, I get on other calls with people that are looking to start their glam crowns and I'm trying to help them think through that, whether or not a Dome Tent is the right structure for them or not. I believe it is because I think you can do a lot with it. But the Dome 10 event is all about getting affordable glamping equipment. You can go buy glamping equipment elsewhere, but at the end of the day, this also comes with that expert guidance. So it's not only affordable, but it's also comes with us, which is, I think, a big thing. The other thing is the partnership opportunity. We are connector of dots. I like to connect the dots. I like to help people where I can, like be in, be in this ecosystem with us and you'll have a much higher likelihood of success is what I like to think. And then... The Dome 10 event is your first step to, to living financially free. So being in the business of glamping is a incredibly lucrative business if you do it correctly. I want to use the Dome 10 to do that. And that's why for, for you guys, the 120 people that are on the call right now, I wanted to, I was racking my brain with this last night. I stayed up late thinking, man, how can I, how can I do a little bit more for people that are on this call that really want to do something in 2025? And I, I have limited time. That's why I do the Dome 10 event. I don't like to have open-ended conversations and contracts with people that don't have something that we're working towards. And I don't take my time lightly. And that's why I like to do these webinars. But for the Dome 10 participants, for people that are on this call and get their orders in today, you don't have to pay for it today, but you put your order in today, you put the order form in. I'll, I'll, I'll link to that shortly. Um, I'm going to throw in two one-on-one -on -one planning sessions, consulting sessions directly, one-on-one, -on -one, not, not webinar. Um, so any order during the Dome Tent event, you buy one Dome Tent, you buy, or you buy a hot tub, you buy five Dome Tents, whatever it is, I'm gonna do these two planning sessions, which by the way, we, we, we have sort of, people asked me about this yesterday, but I, I was coy with the response because it, it is something I'm a little bit uncomfortable with as I try to figure out the future of our business. But because we have such limited time, we have to price our time appropriately. And that's a 30 minute session with us is $350. So, um, this is worth $700. I wanted to do this because I want to make sure that if I get on a call with you, it's incredibly impactful and incredibly powerful. So any order, anywhere, uh, somebody's asking me outside the US, yes, anywhere in the world, you order from us in the Dome 10 event, you get these two sessions with me, which are hopefully going to be the starting point to a really successful business. But that's not it. That's not it. I'm also going to give any order of the, any order today from people that are a part of this challenge free Glamp Launch Accelerator. So Glamp Launch Accelerator is something that we launched uh, a few weeks ago. And if you purchase Glamp Launch Accelerator then, and you order in the Dome 10 event, I'll refund your purchase, by the way, just if you're on the call, because I think a handful of you are. Um, the Glamp Launch Accelerator is basically a A to Z recap of our journey, but also specifically like educational content that is gonna help you accelerate and launch your glamping business. It's on demand. 
it's all it's it's this on steroids. Basically, it's it's ten hours plus a content like this, but really, really pinpoint detailed oriented stuff. So uh, I want to make that free for you guys. So like, let me actually show you what that looks like because, and then I'll move on to the Q and A. But basically, can you see Glam Planch Accelerator now? I don't know if it changed my screen, but I think it did. So Glam Planch Accelerator is currently. Uh, on this website and it's it's 500 bucks. It's normally 600, but it's 500 uh, and I'll give it to you guys for free if you guys place an order. All right, so that's not it though. All right, so I got, I got, <clears throat> got one more thing. Um, oopsie. Um, for anybody that does their homework, I also have another thing that I launched recently and that is the lamp crown profit calculator. And so this is great for anybody. So even if you don't order in the Dome 10 event, um, if you order in the Dome 10 event, you get this as well. But if you don't order in the Dome 10 event, if you're not ready to order in the Dome 10 event, but you do your homework and you send it to me for so this last day of homework. So if you did all, all three days, and even if you didn't do the first couple of days, but you want to like do it all now and just send it to me, um, I'm going to get you this glam crown profit calculator, which is our financial model that allows you to basically go into uh, the calculator and use the uh, the spreadsheet that we developed for our own property to help you plan out your property as well. We normally sell this for like 30 bucks or so. And so it's yours free if you do the homework. And last but not least, I promise you this is last because there's a lot here, is back to that Glam Planch Accelerator. If you're like, Brian, I am so not ready to buy dome tents or to start the next part of this journey to actually start to go towards something. For anybody that has been on this call and they wanna order the Glamp Launch Accelerator right now, I have a, uh, a discount code for $100 off of this list price that is basically gonna be um, uh, just for you guys and just for today. So here's the link to that. You get it for free if you order anything from the Dome 10 event, but if you cannot order from the Dome 10 event, Glam Planch Accelerator is yours for $100 off today with the code, the discount code START. So go ahead and, and go to that page. START is the discount code for $100 off through today. And this might be the little like kick in the butt. Maybe you got a lot of value out of the last few days and you're like, you know what? I'm going to put the few hundred dollars into this and, and get going. But I'd love to work with you in any capacity, as you can tell. And that's why I do these things. So with that being said, let me open it to Q&A. I really enjoy and appreciate your time here. So I wanna make sure I'm, I'm able to be super productive with the next 15, 15 or so minutes. Um, does that sound good to everybody? Like, does, does all of that make sense? Does anybody have any questions about how I just explained all that? Because I know it's a lot um, of, uh, all right, good. So those three things, right? Plan Planch, Accelerator, Profit Calculator for people that did their homework or, or anybody that buys from us. Um, and then the the one on one calls, two of them. If you guys put that order form in today for the Dome Ten event, so here's I'll, I'll go to Q and A while I pull this up. But I'm gonna just so here's the Dome Ten event again, and here's how you would navigate this page. So you'd go down here, you'd scroll down, you'd see the talk with Brian. So if the, if you have questions about the Dome Ten, or you want to talk through um, through that, you can you can you can say you know talk with Brian, schedule a call with me. That's not the free call that I'm talking about. This is not a coaching call. This is like, hey, what can I answer for you regarding all of this stuff and you know how to get started and things like that. And then if you if you want to take me up on the offer of placing an order today, you go down to here, you click order now, and like I said, it's not going to collect your credit card, but it's going to be it's a Google order form that basically you fill out what you want. Um, and then you, you basically submit that and then we'll, we'll, we'll figure out, we'll invoice you and make sure we have all the correct details. So, um, here's that order form if you want to do that. So I really appreciate it guys. Really, really do. This is the way that we grow our business. And this is the way that I want to work with people. I don't want to sell to anybody that comes our way. I want to make sure that we're actually selling to people that want to actually take this seriously and, and do something in 2025. And even if you're not ready to open in March or April of 2025, but you want to place a tent order and get it ready so that you're ready to go by summer or fall, you could also consider doing that as well. So, all right. So, all right. Yes. Ebook. So ebook before I get into everything else is going to be through, um, this link here. Uh, 
Actually, is everybody on my, um, I don't have the link actually readily available. So like I, I do have it. Is everybody getting my emails that is like reminding you about the, this session starting and you get like a, a, a countdown if, okay, great. If you're all getting that, that's where I'll send the recap videos as well as the ebook link and anything else. If you're, if you're, if you're thinking about anything else here, um, let's spend the next 10, 15 minutes talking about things. And then I'll, I'll make a list and make sure I get you guys a recap of as much content that you need to, to get going. All right. So if you're not getting my emails, let me know. Um, because then I can make sure that, uh, I get, get you on the list. All right. The homework, somebody just asked, I just, I'll go to the homework page. So there's the homework for today. If you see it on the screen, uh, take a screenshot, jot it down and, um, note that that is today's homework. And then the last little bit of homework was, uh, the first day was to do that site plan to make sure that you're like thinking about your site plan, sketching it out, how you would envision your glamp ground. The second day was, uh, your open date, your, 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 your target open date, <clears throat> your, um, video, <clears throat> video, 60 minute or 60 second video of explaining your project so that you have that in your phone for social media in the future. Um, and there was one more thing. What was, what was the one more thing from yesterday? Um, so call your local office. Good. I knew somebody was going to say, call your local office, call zoning, call for a permit. Just make a phone call, take that action. So really everything that I've asked in the last few days is super, super simple, super attainable. This is probably the hardest one because I'm actually asking you to read an ebook, um, but it's short. I guarantee you it's like, it's like a 30 minute um, and it's going to be worth it. And if you already have the money, if you're like, Brian, I have like more money in my bank account than I know what to do with and I don't need to raise money. Well then just tell me that and, and skip the ebook. Um, so the ebook will be sent out in the email list that I have afterwards. All right. Yes. And that's my email. Thank you, Amanda. That and everybody can have that here. You can send the homework to that email, Brian at LintonHospitality.com. And I will make sure that um, I look at everybody's homework and everybody that does all three days will get that Glam Crown profit calculator for free. If I miss you for some reason, if you don't see that come through your inbox um, after you submit the, the last uh, day, just ping me, just ping me again and let me know. Um, a lot of inbox activity right now. So I'll, I'll try not to be missing you as, as possible. All right, I'm gonna do some Q&A. Stick around guys, if you can. Hopefully this will be really impactful for you. Um, and uh, make sure Q&As go or, are going into the Q&A. I see some, some Q&A uh, in, the, in the chat. Open up the other box to put them in the Q&A so it's a little bit more organized for me. Um, will you be sending the video from yesterday's session? I could not attend. Yes. In the follow-up, I will make sure that I package all three links to these videos and I will get you replays. Very interesting watching them all again. Thanks. Okay, good. So um, somebody asked, being your location and having an actual winner there, are you open all year? I am not. In the Poconos, Pennsylvania, I could be open year round because there is demand. The only reason why I'm not is the bathrooms that I purchased when I bought the old campground. The pipes are not buried deep enough and the walls are not insulated. So I chose to close for the first two winters. However, I am putting in a new septic and a new bathroom facility that will allow me to stay open year round. I believe that if you have the ability to stay open year round, you should. There is demand. You can make money even with 10, 15, 20% occupancy in the wintertime. You can make money. It's better than being closed if you can. Do you have plans that you can share for the decks? Trying to get our heads around the pricing for the base. How large should the decks be for the size of the tent? Yes, I do. Um, they're not, honestly, most contractors just want to make decks how they want to make decks. I can tell you the size. I also do have my plans, but a 16 foot diameter dome, I like to put on a 20 by 20 foot square. A 23 foot dome, I like to put on a 26 by 26 or yeah, 26 by 26. So I, I basically three, four feet more than the actual dome. And the reason for that is that's enough space then if you put the dome against two sides, so two sides, then you have like an L shape sort of like opening on the other two sides. It looks nice. It can be functional. That's how I would do it. Basically, you can also do a circle deck if you wanted to have the dome flush mount and sitting as if you can't see the deck and you have a little step, step up to it. That's another way to do it. Um, 
Phil asked, how prohibitive would you consider having a few domes in your back forest and people having to drive through your driveway? We have a gated entrance, but I just imagine that it'll be very annoying. We have the potential to tie into our neighborhood's easement to get to the campground. Would this be a must? I, that's a personal question. I don't think I don't think it would be a big issue if you only have a few domes. And keep in mind, like you're probably attracting a decent person. Like it's not a party crowd that's coming out to these domes. That's why I like this so much. By the way, guys, is this is not um, uh, like an Airbnb, like big house, like a three, four, five bedroom house where you have the, all the issues with like honestly, like partiers coming out and like Airbnb horror stories. You're building like intimate glamping destination. Yes, you'll have the occasional loud, rowdy person, but you don't really have the issues that you have. So those nice families, those nice people coming through your driveway, you're okay with it and I'm okay with it. But, um, or maybe maybe that's how you start. Again, this is where I, I don't like to make exceptions rules. Start with that. And then as it becomes an issue, evolve. What kind of platform are you using for direct booking is Jen's question. So Jen... We use a property management system called CloudBeds. CloudBeds is the catch-all for everything. That's where we manage our business through for the property side of things and the revenue and everything like that. That integrates then with other OTAs, online travel agents like Expedia, Booking, Verbo, Airbnb, HipCamp, and then all those bookings that come from those platforms feed in. But the native and where I get 98% of my bookings is directly through campfirmcrest.com directly into CloudBed. So I'm only paying, uh, yeah, CloudBeds. Uh, I'm only paying that credit card processing fee for those bookings. And that's how I make my business a lot more profitable because direct bookings also control the guest experience. And most importantly, you also control all the data. When you have third-party softwares doing it, third-party booking engines, they don't like to give you all the data because that that's their customer data and they don't want you to have, have that. So making sure that you're doing your own direct bookings, whether or not it's CloudBeds or NewBook, CampSpot or RexNexus. There's so many, so many. CloudBeds is not the end-all be-all. It's a good one to look into, but I would definitely do your due diligence. The Glamp Launch Accelerator, by the way, goes into a little bit more detail about all of that. So if you're looking at property management softwares and you're thinking about that, that's a good, that's a good resource as well. Um, all right. So then those unique experiences, Joe says, those, those unique experiences should be included in the nightly rate with higher rate or should be an extra add-on with lower nightly rate. So when I was talking about like experiences, like stargazing, campfire, things like that, those are all like included in the nightly rate, which is making you competitive, but allowing you to have higher rates. So making your property have a higher average daily rate is done through making a great experience. Then the more specific like tailored add-ons, wellness tent, saunas, um, ice cream, car, things like that, those are all extra. And that's the way to make more money because once people are there, once you have a captive audience, you can sell them a lot more stuff than just the nightly stay. What kind of tent is the wellness tent? So my wellness tent is a crest tent, we call it for Ferncrest. Um, it's a safari tent that we developed alongside our dome tents. And um, it's, a, it's a beautiful tent. Um, it's definitely not as popular as our, as our dome tents though, and we don't sell them. Do you actually advertise the extra stuff like the big campfire and stuff, or do you offer it as a surprise to find out after they get there? I'd say the campfire is a surprise. Um, things like the, the store, things like the art, the, the, the vintage retro, retro trailer serving ice cream and coffee in the playground, things like that. Those are advertised. So people do know that they're, they're coming to expect that. But I'd say that the, um, the hype man being by the campfire and talking up the town and talking up us is definitely more of a surprise and delight situation. All right. Joe also, also asked, what kind of system did you set up for the self-service camp store? Any kind of smart system? Yes. So um, Square Register with the, the UI interface of something called Kiosk Buddy. So Kiosk Buddy, um, is that in the chat here? Kiosk Buddy. So that's a software. I go into more detail about this in, in the accelerator as well, but basically uh, Kiosk Buddy is a great sort of interface that then ties into Square. So your credit card processing is done through Square 
and then your user, your your guest is experiencing something called kiosk buddy. All right, um, red flags to look for in investors. Um, so I, I think investors that are going to be super impatient and are looking for cash flow, like like they they really want to put money in and make sure that they're getting a quarterly dividend. I'd be a little bit red flagged about that. Like make sure your investors understand or make sure that you're you're you're, you're approaching people that understand that this is a longer term investment, even if you have that buyout in three years. I, I, I would just be careful of anybody that has a degree of impatience. I just invested into a um, somebody's Glamcrom project, um, which I don't do, by the way. That's not like my thing. It was just a friend. And I was like, okay, I'm going to throw just $1,000 in just, just as a, a sign of support. And I'm not, I'm not even going to like think about that because like that's the type of thing that I want, you know, that person to like not even have to worry about me. Um, so I think that's the type of mentality. Now, you don't want just people that don't care about making money. That's a donation. That's a grant. That's not what this is. Um, but it's definitely, you know, impatience is, is probably the biggest thing. Um, should we just accept investors that want to be long-term shareholders instead of lending you money as short-term debt and making interest? Uh, yes. I mean, it, again, it really depends. Like if you if you have a minority investor that wants to be long-term, that's fine. I just be, I, I'm careful and mindful of the idea that long-term investors that are not intimately involved in it. Um, and if you're putting your heart and soul into this business, I don't want to have somebody that owns 40% of the project and you're putting on all the work. Granted, yes, they put in money, but have a buyout then. That's why the buyout's important so that you can actually own entirety of the business. And when your business is up and, and the buyout, by the way, is done through, maybe you've been saving the cash flow that you've been generated, but more likely the buyout is done because you have a sustainable, healthy business at that point, you can go to a bank and get some debt against it and then buy that investor out. And then the debt is serviced by the business over the next three, four, five years, but you own 100% of the equity. So you're getting all the upside. That's how I would do it. Basically replace that equity investor with traditional bank financing when you can get a chunk of change from a bank. Does that make sense? Um, it's like a refinance event buyout. Um, all right. Yes, please give us the contact for the SBA loan. All right, so here's the, um, oh, I always do this. Oops. Um, sorry, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen. Or I'm actually going to go to uh, Benetrends. So this is the company. So Benetrends is uh, the company that helps people basically match up. So here's the website. Um, if you want a, if you're looking at doing a bigger project and you want a personal introduction, I can, uh, I can, I can get you a personal introduction to them. Um, if you're ready to like take it seriously and take that next step, so just let me know. Um, thoughts on crowdfunding, perhaps offering a stay or some merchandise in exchange. Gretchen, that was your question. Good question. That's actually how I, I just did that thousand dollars into the other blank round. Is, is it? It's, it's actually on WeFunder. So WeFunder is a crowdfunding funding platform that you can use for that. I've used Kickstarter in my past life. So for my clothing company, I, I actually raised over a million dollars on three Kickstarter projects. Um, so I, I have some uh, crowdfunding experience as well. Um, I would say that crowdfunding is a lot of work. Like it's a lot of work. I actually think that if you can do it without crowdfunding, you should. If crowdfunding is like your last resort, and you have a following and you're doing good on social media, crowdfunding is all about how many people you have the attention of, right? That attention that you're generating from social media is what ultimately crowdfunding is good for. So if you don't have a big following, you're probably not gonna have much luck with crowd crowdfunding. That's why networking locally, getting in front of people that might have some money that wanna put some money to work is probably the better route. Um, so, Here's another question. You, you use high-end linens in your tents. Is the mattress also high-end? Pricing in mattresses ranges from a few hundred to very pricey. No. The linens are what people touch. That's what people are going to talk about. That's what they're going to see. They're going to see the label and the linen. You're going to be able to talk about that in your marketing. My mattresses, Zinus. A couple hundred, two, three hundred bucks. Mattresses these days are amazing at a low price. I don't even know how like these mattress companies that you know have stores that are showing 
two, three thousand dollar mattresses are making money. I remember my first mattress when I went to college. My parents bought it, went to the mattress store, chose it out. It was like a big deal, right? Now it's like just just order a mattress online. Zinus is an Amazon brand, honestly. It's nothing like notable. It's not marketable, but it is amazing. They're really decent. They're great mattresses. I use them secret. I use them at my boutique hotel in the city too. And people like rave about them. They're like, oh my God, this is the best mattress. Yep. Cost $300. So I would recommend that. Um, so how much should I estimate to open with four domes? For domes, I would recommend, and this might be similar for other glamping structures as well, not like hard-sided structures, but between platform, dome tent, furniture, electrical work, I like to say a 16-foot dome, about half of the cost is the actual dome, and then half of the cost is everything else. So that dome is like $5,700, plus if you do the insulation and everything else, you know, $7,000, $6,000, $7,000. So then just double that and that's your price of everything else, furniture, platform, things like that. So it's like a 10 to $15,000 investment per site is sort of what you got to think about spending. Plus you got, you know, if you're going to do a playground, if you're going to do other things, you got to think that. But if you want to do four dome tents, fully set up with like a bathhouse or you're putting bathrooms in them, um, not including septic, uh, it, hopefully like either you have a septic or you, you, you have plans for a septic and you know how much that's going to cost. It could be as low as 10,000 could be as much as 30, 40,000. So septic is the big variable, but you could do a four dome setup for 50,000, $60,000. But again, you're generating now, you're creating a business that could probably generate 100,000. Again, it all depends on how you do it, but it could generate $100,000 in profit for you a year. And so the arbitrage, the, the upside there is just so much greater than building another STR, like a short-term rental or an Airbnb. You can do so much with the glamping industry from an investment standpoint, even though these numbers are big and we're talking tens of thousands of dollars, the actual return on investment is so much quicker if you do it right. And if you follow like the challenge, like we just did, you're, you're on the right track. Um, ebook link. Okay. Can you post the SBA company? I gave that. Um, will you talk more about direct bookings? What software? We talked about that. Are the videos from day one and do day two available for viewing. Not yet, but they will be shortly. And I promise you, you guys will get an email with them. Um, do your dome packages include vinyl flooring to cover the decking inside? If so, do you offer color options for the floors? We do not include the vinyl flooring. And the only reason why is it's going to be a lot cheaper for you to buy that locally at a hardware store or Home Depot. Simple as that. The vinyl flooring I put in mine, I've done two different types of vinyl flooring. I've done Higher end vinyl flooring, which was like $2, $3 a foot. So like a 16 foot dome costs like $1,000 in maybe like $700, $800 in vinyl flooring. But then, then I was like, ah, I wonder if I can do like the rollout vinyl flooring that you see in the back section of Lowe's or Home Depot. And I did that in six of my dome tents. And you know what? It looks really good. And it was like $100 or $200 total for each dome. And I think it looks good. Um, largely because... It's a small space, you got the beds there, you don't see much of it, it's easy to clean. If it gets damaged, so be it, I can, I can take it out. But like, it's been, it was a good choice. I probably would do that in my domes, but you could also do a nicer, you could also do a nicer vinyl floor if you're going a little bit higher end. Again, I'm more campground setting. If you're doing more resort high end, maybe you do a nicer plank vinyl flooring. Um, how do we submit the homework? Super interested in the profit calculator. Submit the homework. To Brian at lintonhospitality.com. Send it to me. That's it. It's me on the other end. I'll say hi. You got my email now. Don't add it to any spam databases. <laughs> um, so yesterday I asked about the hot tubs, but did not see an answer. I tried to find on Promised Land's website under equipment, but did not find it. All right. So the hot tubs are on this, this webpage still. Sorry if it's not clear. It's not like an e-commerce website. So if you go to this Dome Tent event website and you scroll down, it's the section directly after the order now button for the Dome Tent. So there's an order now button for the Dome Tents, and then you'll see the ultimate wood-fired hot tub. And then there's a bunch of pictures, there's some info, you can see it there. Um, 
So the link on your website to the profit calculator does not work. Oh, I got to fix that. Um, we launched a new website in conjunction with the Dome 10 event this year or this, this week. And so, yes, I have had some broken links and that is embarrassing. Not everything's working like the guides and the webinar buttons as well. Those are not, those are not working. So if you're poking around my website, definitely there are some issues with it, but it's going to get resolved in the next day. Unfortunately, um, there's the Glenn Crown Profit Calculator link I just put in the box. Um, all right. So then somebody said, if ordered today, when would payment be due? Uh, payment would be due uh, end of next week. But if you guys like are really going home on this, let's, let's talk like, we need to get payment, 50% 50, 50 payment. So 50% payment of the Dome 10 event stuff would be due during the Dome 10 event. But um, but you know what? Let's, let's, let's see what we can do to support each other. Um, and uh, I, wanna, I wanna see people be successful. So then Matt Morgan asks, who is your guest avatar? You talked yesterday about small families and couples and the appropriate size tents for them. What are the stats on the most common guest type? Um, Wow, Amika, that was so nice of you to share that. I'm glad it, I'm glad I'm glad you like the calculator. Um, thank you. Um, so the guest avatar that I would say is for me is it's it's really a millennial. It's not super young. It's more like me, it's my peers, at least for me, probably because I market well to them, but it's people that have young families. Uh, you know, they're probably like 30 to 45 is like the family type of demographic. You don't come to a glamp ground in the Poconos or in most places once your kids are teenagers or even like, you know, young teens. That's like starting to become like more of like destination, you know, maybe more adventurous type of travel or camping. So because I could see that too. Like right now I love to go glamping because my I have an eight, a six and a two year old. Oh, right. Who wants to go do a bunch of work? So glamping makes sense. But when they're older, I want to go to you know, zip, I, I don't know. I want to go like more adventurous places. So glamping is a little bit less popular um, for, for older families. And then it becomes more popular for the older people. So like 60s and 70s, because now it's relaxing and it's an opportunity. And then from the younger avatar standpoint, you know, couples and things like that, that don't have kids yet, that have dogs. Honestly, they want activities that they can go out and do hiking and activities, outdoor activities with their dogs. Um, so they bring dogs and that's why you can make a lot of money off the dogs. Ben asks, how difficult is it to add the insulation to the tents after install? Is it possible to wait until the end of the 2025 season ad? Yeah, it is. I'd say it's not, it's not great. I always recommend if you think you're going to stay open year round, get the insulation that you need. But if budget is an issue and you're like, you know what, maybe I shouldn't, then, you know, you could always, you could always add it later. Um, it does just become, you know, more shipping costs. Because the insulation would come with the dome. So it's like, you know, it's all packaged together. Whereas if you buy it separately later, you might have a little bit more cost. And then just the, the likelihood of maybe, you know, again, having to get the labor back in there and things like that in your time. Um, but it's possible. All right. People are asking about the homework. I think everybody got answered by that through the chat box. Um, then how do you feel about the two-night minimum requirement? I have a great story about that. We had a two-night minimum requirement last year. I lifted it at the beginning of this year. I put it back in place for the weekends halfway through the season and left a one night possibility for the weekdays. The reason why I did this is Saturday night is your far, by and far most popular night. People can often make it out after work to get Friday night. And if they have a two night minimum, they're going to do it. And you're going to fill Friday and Saturday night. When you have a one night, uh, possibility on a weekend, Saturdays book up and Friday gets orphaned. You don't want Friday to be orphaned. That's a moneymaker night. That's why you do a two night minimum on the weekends. But in the weekdays where occupancy is lower, somebody wants to come out for a Wednesday night, they can. Does that make sense? All right. Um, Nat asks, can you share information about your prefab kitchenettes? So the Dome 10 event website does not have that on, on there because we have not um, put it on there because that is not something that we do in our franchise model for Impress franchise. However, we do have prefab kitchenettes and bathrooms and we can make those available. If you are interested in participating in the Dome 10 event and you want to order and you want prefab bathrooms and kitchenettes, 
email me directly, ask me, I can get you the information. We can make it happen. So um, just let me know. Um, what was the minimum per night you would charge again? Michelle asked. I would say that, look, you're not getting into this glamping business for less than less than 100, definitely not. Don't get into the, the two digit numbers, but definitely I think 150 is a good baseline for you to, to try to not go below. Rita asked, when we make purchase of the dome tent, when do we pay? 50% uh, during the dome tent event, 50% upon delivery in January. So you don't have to pay the full amount now. You're only paying 50%, paying the other 50% in January when you get the tents. Um, and uh, again, don't let money stand in the way. Reach out to me if you're really wanting to make something happen. Let's see what we can do. And then Jason asked, do you suggest offering RV or temp, tent campsites alongside your glamping offers? I would only do that if you already have RV. If you already have RV spots, if, you, if you're not converting them to glam grounds and you're adding glam ground, that's okay. And I actually don't think it's worth adding because the amount of time and money that you're gonna, you're gonna put into building that RV spot is the same exact amount of time and effort that you could build a glamping site for and make 5X the amount of money off of. So it also creates a dynamic issue, in my opinion, when you have a, a campground and you have too many different types of options. If you have rustic camping, RV and glamping, those are, those are three entirely different types of people. You're killing yourself with the amount of different work that you have to do. I'd focus. Focus, focus, focus. That's why I got rid of the bell tent because it was just too many different options. Um, Matt asks, can you please talk about what's in Glamp Launch program? Uh, so actually, if you go to the Glamp Launch, here's the Glamp Launch program, Matt and anybody else. So that's the link to the Glamp Launch. Again, if you use the code START right now, um, use that in the uh, in the box, you'll be able to get $100 off of that. But basically that, that website should give you some ideas of what the, the content questions that it's going to help you with, it's going to address. <clears throat> All right. Um, just curious about what you charge for the franchise fee is Jamie's question. <clears throat> so the franchise fee will be $50,000 and that's going to be a $50,000 upfront fee. However, because this is early and because people are working with us very intimately, we're waiving that franchise fee for the first 10 franchises. We have a few locked in and then probably another six, seven more that will not have a franchise fee um, because we want to see you be successful. And we have time and energy to put towards your success right now. And that's why we're not doing a franchise fee up front. And then 7%. Sorry. So I, that was maybe a little bit misleading. There's no upfront franchise fee right now for the first 10. Then it's 7% of revenue in the future. So 7% or so franchise. Um, Davin asked, is the price to add the bathroom kitchen to the dome on the dome and event page? It's not. I'll email it to anybody that's interested. And then somebody else asked, please share the SBA loan company. All right. I'll make sure I do that. Um, that are, right, the link's already there. If you want a, a direct introduction to them, email me and I'll make a direct introduction. <clears throat> what are the dome tents win rated? A uh, hundred miles per hour. I know that's scary with hurricanes and everything like that. But I just talked to somebody actually who wants to potentially do them in hurricane zone. And we talked a little bit about that. And the idea with hurricanes being on people's mind is that, you know, if you really needed to, you could take the PVC cover off. You could take like, and leave the steel structure up, which takes the most time to actually assemble. And again, this would be like worst case scenario, cat category three coming in, category four coming in. You're like, okay, I got to save it. And you could take everything off and just have the steel structure. Um, that could be an interesting way to like mitigate the risk of wind because the steel structure is like literally wind would just blow through it. It wouldn't catch the wind at all. Um, so when is homework due? Homework's due. Uh, well, I actually don't, I didn't give a due date. Um, homework's due by end of day tomorrow. So that's, that work? Actually, what is today? Wednesday? End of day Friday. Do the homework by end of day Friday. Send it to me and um, we'll get you your calculator. What is the most popular dome size? Uh, 23 foot now is the most popular. I'd say 16 foot before, but 23 foot has now become the most popular because it allows for more versatility. You could put a bathroom in it. You could put a bunk bed, bunk beds in it with a king bed. Whereas the 16 foot is a little bit too small for all of that. 
Um, Jeremy asked, what does your security cameras look like? Cameras at the entrance, communal space, and electronic locks on each unit. Exactly. That's what it is. Cameras at the entrance, communal space, and electronic locks on each unit. Stephanie, just purchased 300 acres with my sister, hoping for an opening date of May 2025. Yeah, Stephanie, you got it. My sister and I are torn. She thinks the dome should have a bathroom, and I'm leaning more towards having one central and nice bathroom house. Any thoughts? Very good question. I would say it really depends on your budget and what you're looking at doing. And I also don't think it's bad to think that maybe you do 16 foot domes that have a bathhouse and you could put those maybe a little bit more distributed out where they don't have to have like all the septic stuff, but then maybe you have family units that do have bathhouses. That's how I'm thinking about my model moving forward is I'm thinking about adding bathhouses to the 23 foot domes, um, but then potentially having still domes that are amazing that have a central bathhouse. I think you can have your cake and eat it too there. I, I don't want to say that you should get too unfocused, but I think that there's there's definitely a reason for having, like for me, the campy feel of having the bathhouse and the economic reason of not having to dis distribute as much septic out to the areas where those those tents would be. That makes sense? Um, so Sam asked, I just purchased the accelerator and I think there may be a bug. After purchase, it says Glam Planche Accelerator will be available on September. Oh, that is a bug. That's an update that needs to be fixed because of the website update. Thank you, Sam. First of all, thank you for purchasing it. And thank you for bringing that to my attention. If you're still on the call. I'll make sure I fix this right afterwards. Anybody else that purchases it too, I'll fix it. Uh, Jen, red flags to look for when sourcing a property. Um, I, I honestly, it's, property is such a personal thing, but I would say, you know, get, get something that septic is your biggest concern. Make sure that you can have a septic on it. What is a good return on investment for investors? Um, ah, uh, gosh, that's a good question. So right now they can put in the, in the uh, bank and get 5%. So if you're giving 10%, that's like, probably the minimum that investor would want if they're doing a private investment, like 10% annual return profile. Um, I'd say getting it into the teens is probably going to be the most exciting thing. Getting it at like 20% is like home run. So if you can model something and you're like, you know, I think we'll be, we'll get you between 10 to 15% return on your money annually. Uh, that's a good, that's a good return for them. And that's not an overly zealous amount of money that you're giving out for them. What's your take on private events at the Glamp Ground is John's question. Um, I, I love it. Do it. Private events, you can make a lot of money on. You can charge extra for them. Uh, rent out the whole campground and you make, you make even more money. Mark asks, how can this team of participants keep in touch as a momentum team? Great question. Um, I'll do more of these and we can always jump back on. So I'll find some type of cadence where we can make sense of it all. Also, the accelerator is a great thing to do because then we can stay in touch that way. Joe asked, how, how much is a... Re oh, I already did that one. Um, Stephanie says, domes are becoming extremely popular and popping up everywhere. I'm worried about oversaturation in the market. Any thoughts? I'm actually not worried about that yet. I was just at the glamping show in Denver, Colorado, and we were talking a lot about that. And, and it turns out that domes are only representing like one or 2% of the overall inventory of glamping structures. So although you're seeing them pop up everywhere, it's because you're in the market right now for them or you're thinking about them. And obviously uh, these social media channels are like, you know, sending you a bunch of stuff on domes because you follow me maybe. And I would actually, I would really challenge the mindset that they're popping up everywhere. There are domes, there are, um, but don't worry too much about that. Saturation is a long way out. And I think that if you do it right and you follow sort of the guidance, I, I really think that there's there's plenty of room still for the next three, four, five years. And even after that, then you're going to be so entrenched in the business as a first mover that um, you'll have a nice moat around you because you have a community of people that want to stay with you. Um, have you heard of any grants available for businesses of this type? Yes, there are. I, I don't have any off the top of my head, but definitely check with your local economic development agency. So like an economic industrial development corp if you will, I think they're, they're like called. Um, that's a great way to start if you look up EIDC or something like that online. Um, Jackie asked mattresses. Again, it's Zinus. 
Uh, Sam asked, will you share your linen brand? Yes, we use Brook Linen. That's the, that's the linen brand. And then Rose asked, is your marketing branding experience or in your marketing branding experience, how well can glamping businesses pair with a retreat type and or arts workshop business? Does it get too busy for branding in your opinion or just require more thoughtful branding? Um, no, I, th I think it's great. I think it just requires you to be thoughtful about the branding. And I think that making sure that you're not trying to tell too many messages, really don't, 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 don't make more than one thing your core message. Do you have a better price on dome tents than the more you buy? Somebody asked. Um, traditionally, no, but I can give more value. The more you buy, the more you get me and you, the more you get my help. So I know that's not a great thing for everybody, but for those of you that are looking to do something, you're like, man, I want to buy six dome tents or I want to buy eight dome tents. Um, you better believe that I'm like, I'm like your biggest cheerleader. Like I'm going to help you make sure you're successful with that. Um, but if it's even more than that, we can definitely talk. There's, there's always ways to, to make the economics work in your favor. Lindsay said, how does investor repayment work? I'm worried it won't be able to afford the monthly payments on such a large loan. Um, yeah, you can defer payments. So investors, if it's a loan, just do interest only type of payments for a while until that balloon payment where you refinance with a bank and take that money and give the give the investor and you're refinancing with a bank when the interest rates are lower, which will happen eventually. Um, are domes all weather, all climates? Yes. Uh, desert and big winds. Yes. You, you can definitely do domes with, with wind, desert. Uh, you just gotta be thoughtful about the, the decks and how you build them. Jason asked, do you leverage virtual assistance overseas labor for any part of your business? I do. I do. I have three uh, virtual assistants in the Philippines that work for us full time. And that's a big thing. Um, honestly, it's, it's a really powerful way to, to, to get a lot of time. So I have, I have, I have, you know, customer service and, and things like that. Um, and it's great. It's a great way to leverage, uh, overall. Somebody else asked Brian, I would like to be introduced to Benetrends. Great. I will shoot me, shoot me an email. Matt said, I'm interested in buying the accelerator program. Can you talk us through the information included in that? Hopefully you saw the website that I just sent over, Matt, um, if that makes sense. There's a lot of different, it's basically, you know, the A to Z of opening up a profitable glam crown through our eyes. Um, Lindsay said, do you have a rough estimate cost to build a bathhouse? Yeah, you can get a prefab bathhouse um, for like anywhere from 30 to $60,000. Um, so I'd say that, you know, if you're going to build one, it's probably a similar, similar cost. Uh, maybe you could build it for cheaper if you did a little bit more rustic, you do probably 15, 20,000, but I'd say like, the, the, the nice prefab bathhouses, like the nice ones, $50,000, um, which is a lot of money, but it could be worth it if, if that's helping you open faster and not have to worry about putting bathrooms in each unit. And then T has a question. Um, so I thought to do an incinerator toilet inside, or should I do regular communal bathhouse and use solar to give it off grid? That's the million dollar question. I'd say you definitely could do an incinerator toilet. Uh, anytime you do incinerator or compost, you're gonna be a little bit more of a rustic campground. So a flushing toilet, even if it's in a communal bathhouse is a great way to make a little bit more valuable. Woo, 71 questions, guys. Oh, you're gonna kill me. My eyes are getting bloodshot from, uh... <laughs> thanks Amanda. Um, so that is all the questions, guys. Homework is due Friday. Uh, send it over to me. Dome tents, if you want any of that value from the Dome Tent event, you can order by next Friday. But the deal that I have for you guys, the challenge participants, and the reason why I put the clock on it for today, for the calls, for the accelerator, all of that is because I want you to really take this excitement and take the next steps. So putting that in action right now today is the way to do it. Um, if you want the accelerator, use the discount code START. Whew. All right. Matt. Laura, Cameron, everybody, I really appreciate this. I will, uh, you have my email. You know where to sell it, send homework. I'll send an email out. Give me a few hours, if not, maybe till tonight to get that email out with all the follow-up info and um, rock on. You guys are gonna do it. I believe in you. I can see the energy. Even though this is a big group of people on this call right now, know that there is plenty of space in this industry in this world. I know a lot of this is US, but there are people outside of this, this country. 
in this world for successful glamping business, let's have a mentality of plenty. We don't have to worry about competition because we are still early movers to this. You got it. If you open in 2025, you have a very good chance of being, being successful because I believe in you and you're learning all the right things. So I will see you guys around. I look forward to seeing these names and hopefully meeting you face-to-face -face one day. Have a good one.